I asked you if you love theme parks or loathe them because of the crowds. Here are a couple of your responses. Samuel Moore seems to like him. He tweets, it's cheaper to go to a local theme park than travel out of the country or travel across the country. Texas alum tweets, it's a nice treat for the family since we've been living without a lot of extras. That's a good point. But not everybody agrees. N23MC tweets, loathe overpriced everything, long lines, total unhappy experiences. I will take my town park over a theme park. Change your Twitter handle to Bah Humbug. All right, robust theme park business means crowds, though. But crowds mean longer lines and more crowds. NBC reports that some popular destinations this week actually had to turn people away or ask them to come back later on in the day. So will long lines and crowds put a dent in theme park profits in 2012? Let us bring in Jeffrey Thomason. He is entertainment and leisure analyst at Hilliard Lions, as well as Rob Alvey. He is owner of ThemeParkReview.com. All right, Rob, I'm going to begin with you because, you know, you're, you're digging into these names and you're writing about them, you're talking about them all the time. Sure. Uh, things have gotten better, but is there is there a downside to all that upside in terms of the crowds and the crowding and the stuff like that that may just turn people off longer term? Well, I mean, it's it's the holidays, you know, out here in Orlando, and I think uh, people come to the parks, and uh, you, you kind of expect the parks to be a little bit more crowded, and yeah, it's we've been hitting a, a record crowds this past week, but honestly, you know, it's, it's like they say, the, uh, you know, the worst day you're going to have on vacation is going to be better than any day you're going to have home at, at work anyway, and, you know, we've seen the cars driving through, and yes, there's been traffic, but loads of families with cars you know with with signs on the cars that say you know bound for disney and and people just seem to be overall having a good time even though yes it's crowded and you know we always try to offer as much advice as we can for you know uh, trying even on a crowded day making yeah. an experience the best it could be you know jeff we didn't see much of a move from 09 to 2010 in terms of the crowd some were up some were down but even maybe then just one two percent what about from 2010 to this year? We don't have full 2011 numbers yet. Are we going to see a big bump up when those numbers finally roll out? 2011 was a good year, and I think the numbers will show that when they come out. I think you need to keep a couple of things in mind. Number one is pent-up demand. Uh, people inherently want to be entertained. And in 2009, 2010, it was not conducive for that. The economy was not good. Uh, people have uh, improved their economic situations, the parks have improved, and that pent-up demand really kicked in, and we saw a return to consumerism in 2011. Okay, well, you covered Disney or in, uh, you know, in Cedar Fair. Uh, I know you don't cover six, so I can't ask you about that. Cedar Fair, kind of a name that not a lot of people know in terms of a stock investment. Do you like one or both or none of, of Disney or Cedar Fair? We're actually recommending purchase of both stocks, uh, one obviously from a large cap angle, the other small cap angle, but in terms of Cedar Fair, it's more of a pure play on the industry. There's no media, uh, there's no movies, there's, there's no, no television, ESPN. it's amusement parks. There's no ESPN, it's a pure play, but they're doing a very good job. It's a very well run company. Uh, they were susceptible to the economic environment of the past couple of years, but they also stuck to their knitting. They continued to reinvest in the parks, which I think is very important. In 2009 and 2010, they spent $70 million per year boosting uh, the park's appeal and adding rides and attractions. That figure should grow to $90 million in the just concluded year and next year as well. Yeah, and Rob, you know, Cedar Fair, maybe a bigger company than people know in terms of the properties they own as a kid. I used to go, my mom used to take me to Knott's Berry Farm. They own King's yep. Dominion in, in Virginia. Uh, how good of a company, how well run is Cedar Fair? They've definitely been getting better and better over the years. I mean, I, I actually, I grew up with Knott's Berry Farm, and you saw a, a point in time where Knott's kind of uh, started to, to remove some of that, that a little bit more family value and kind of focus on thrills, and I think they learned what their market wanted from, from their parks, and each one of their parks seems to be focusing on, on more of their demographic. Um, Cedar Point is, is building, you know, the biggest and best roller coasters in the country. Knott's is focusing back on family do those, entertainment. Rob, do those pay off? I mean, it's like, it's great to say I've got the tallest or the fastest or the most loops, whatever, but they're expensive to build. Do they pay off? I mean, when you go to a park opening year, and even sometimes the following year of a, of a brand new biggest, best attraction in the world, you'll see lines two to three hours. I mean, people are ticking through the turnstiles, um, and that always is going to turn into good revenue from the, for the parks. I guess that's why I'm a Grinch and maybe stay away. Those crowds <laughs> can get a little bit to be of a hassle. Uh, Jeff, I'll end it with you. You recommend Cedar Fair. What would it take for you not to recommend it? How much more upside until you say, uh, maybe a little rich? Well, our price target is $23 uh, within one year. So but you're I close. Think the you other... got a buck, buck 23 a share. 
But the interesting part to that, uh, that price objective and our total return outlook is the cash distribution. Uh, they should pay around, a, they paid about, about a dollar per share in the just concluded year. They probably will pay close to a dollar sixty per unit in 2011, which equates to about a 7.4% yield. And we expect that cash distribution to grow again in 2013 by a substantial degree. All right, Jeff and Rob, hey, fun little segment. Maybe I'll see you at Kings Island. Gentlemen, have a happy new year. Thank you. Cool, thank you. Thanks for the All invitation. Right. Take care.